praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We thank him for the opportunity to pray Jumu'ah in this blessed month of Ramadan. Undoubtedly, the rewards are ample and the opportunity is huge. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We pray to him that will enable us to seize this opportunity and to get the benefit of every second and minute and hour of this blessed month and this blessed day of Friday. We bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship except Allah. And we bear witness that Muhammad وسلم, is his servant and messenger. My brothers and sisters, we are in the month of Ramadan, the month of the Quran. And we cannot avoid talking about the Quran again and again and again. I took permission from this couple, hardworking couple, they gave everything they could, time-wise, money-wise, energy-wise, to their children. The father goes to take a meal, favorite dish that the son loves. He goes to the campus, to a town. Let's not even be in details. In this month of Ramadan, to his surprise, it was around Asr time, he found his son eating, drinking, laughing in the middle of the day. The father thought, maybe my son is sick. Maybe, of course, the brain at that time tries to find an exit strategy from a crisis, a shock, a trauma. He raised his son to the best of his ability. He's even paying his tuition and looking after him. He said, don't worry. So long as you study, all on me. I'll work double jobs. I'll do whatever I'll borrow. I want you to be successful. But I want you to know Allah. Son, what are you doing? It's Ramadan. Oh, Father, I, I wanted to talk to you about this. Are you sick? No. Why are you eating? I need to talk to you about that. The father is shaking now. Good things the mother is not around. I don't believe in Islam. Why, son? I don't think the Quran is from God. Who told you? I took a philosophy course. Now I know how to think for myself. Typical answer lately from many uh, children who take a couple lessons in philosophy. It's like you never, you were never able to think. Now the philosophy course will make you think. Don't take me wrong, those who love philosophy. Philosophy is good, makes you think. But if you don't think the right way, you can be lost. There is a very common question now amongst the youth. As a matter of fact, amongst non-Muslims. We produced a show this Ramadan. I'm not sure if you guys watch it. You better watch your favorite dramas from back home. We are boring show. We talk about Islam. It's boring. And the answers we get in and questions from non-Muslims are unbelievable. And one of the shows that was the most watched and the most attacked is the one that talks about the Quran is the word of Allah. And hello, John and Jennifer. This is not like in the Bible. The Quran was preserved, memorized, and written on different materials in the life of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You can't find any religious book with that. You don't believe me? Come any night and you see even our children memorize it by heart. And when one of us makes a mistake, we get corrected. Because this is not my property, it's the word of Allah. It's preserved by the community in the hearts of the believers since the time of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu That by itself is a miracle. A 600 pages book memorized. And you saw and you're seeing children as young as seven and eight. We have them here 
who memorized the Quran and they read like it was revealed 1500 years ago. Find me just that by itself. Find me something like that anywhere in the world. Isn't that what Allah said? <laughs> we have indeed revealed this reminder and we will preserve it. Not necessarily just in books, and, but we'll preserve it in the hearts. It is preserved. You are reading it every night. You're listening from Hafiz and they're reading it as it was revealed. Like we say, it doesn't matter he is an Arab or non-Arab. The moment he goes to the, through the Tajweed lessons and pro pre proper pronunciation, you cannot tell the difference. How? And if he comes to speak Arabic, he will show a big accent. But when he comes to the Quran, he doesn't show. This by itself is a miracle. But okay, let's say it's not a miracle for them. What can we say and educate ourselves about the Quran? The most asked question now, I noticed in the last few years, and even more so in this month of Ramadan, is, really, is the Quran really the book of God? Is it really from God? Because they are telling them Muhammad had a lot of time. And even now, some Christian missionary, they like to say, especially in Arabic language. Now in every Arabic country, there is a group of missionary and they speak Arabic very well. They read Quran properly and they are paid heavily US dollar, euro, and they are actually attacking. They said the best way to turn these people out of Islam is to study the Arabic language. They are studying the Arabic language and you're not studying, many of you cannot even write your name in Arabic. They are learning. I met one of them, unbelievable. He knows so much grammar. I said, Ya Allah, he may ask me a question in grammar and deep, old Arabic. He was so good to the point I enjoyed discussion on grammar and balagha with him. I was so impressed. Then at the end of the day, I found that he was going on a mission work in the Arab world. It's happening. It's okay. They're doing their job. You know, let them do what they want, what they believe, but we have to do our own. Now the point is, the point is, do we know that the Quran is the word of Allah? Oh yeah. How do you know? My mom told me, my dad told me. That's not enough, mama. That's not enough, baba. Your children now are saying, what's the guarantee? I have answered this just this month of Ramadan. If I did not answer a minimum 20 to 30 questions just about this topic. So let's go over. Time is now with us. This lecture is two hours. <laughs> How are we going to do this in a Juma? But we have to remind ourselves of some key points. We Muslims believe the Quran was revealed and we have no doubt. But can we convince someone about it? Because all we say, oh, they say prove it. We start reading the Quran. He's not asking you about the Quran. He's asking you, is the Quran from God? Well, wait, I read from the Quran. I don't believe in the Quran. Why are you telling me the Quran? You see, the, this argument is the most common. He doesn't believe in the Quran. Why are you telling him the verses from the Quran? And this is common. Very wrong mistake. Prove me this, uh, this is right. Okay, I will tell you from it. No, you need to go outside. Okay? So, is there evidence that the Quran is the word of God? Mm, we need to look for that. Briefly, we're going to go. The Quran challenges. The Quran says, okay, you don't believe this is God. It challenges and it was not, it's not something new. From the time the Quran was revealed to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in spite of the fact that they knew Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was not a poet, was not a person who would do spoken words, because Arabs were known for spoken words and poetry. Yet, when he started speaking, 
those who know Muhammad very well, and they know his credibility and his good reputation, and believed and listened and believed, they became, they embraced. Because they saw there was no interest for Muhammad to do this. What's his interest? Who looks for a position? These days, people lie just to get support. Look at politicians. They will lie to you, lie to you, lie to you, just to get your support. Yes, sir, yeah, we'll do that, we'll do this. I, I promise. Yeah? But he was the anti-politician. It was not a popular thing to read the Quran. So the Quran challenged, number one, challenged, Challenge in many, many places. Give me just an ayah similar to it. Give me 10 ayahs. Give me a surah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, قُلْ لَإِنِ اجْتَمَعَاتِ الْإِنسُ وَالْجِنُّ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَأْتُ بِمِثْلِ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ لَا يَأْتُونَ بِمِثْلِهِ وَلَوْ كَانَ بَعْضُهُمْ لِبَعْضٍ ظَهِيرًا Chapter, uh, chapter uh, Al-Isra, chapter... 17, ayah number 88. Say if mankind and jinn gathered together to produce the like of this Quran, they would not produce the like of it, even if some of them were to contradict each other. Jesus, peace be upon him, was sent to a Hellenic culture, a Greek culture, which excelled in medicine. His miracle were more medical miracles. Raising the dead, curing the leper, the deaf, the mute, the blind. Medicine couldn't do that. He raised Lazarus from the dead. His miracles, talking to a Greek society, well, they were Byzantium under the Romans, but they were the culture, the language is Hellenic, Greek. So he came and challenged them in their thing. Musa, Moses, challenged the magicians with something that looked like magic, but he wasn't. The Arabs don't have no medicine, don't have that. They didn't practice magic, but they had spoken words and poetry. They had, we recently went on a trip and I showed the group where Ukav is the largest festival. You know, that was like the Oscar awards of poetry. They all gathered there. Muhammad was never part of it. But that was the place where everybody speaking. They, right now there is a culture in North America of spoken words. You know, and they have even festivals for that. But same thing was in Arabia. He challenged them with the word. This doesn't mean that he didn't perform the other miracles. But this, the main miracle in Islam is the word itself. Because this word, this manual for humanity is to last until the end of time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَمْ يَقُولُونَ افْتَرَاهِ قُلْ فَأْتُ بِعَشْرِ سُوَرٍ مِثْلِهِ مُفْتَرَيَاتٍ وَدْعُوا مَنْ اسْتَطَعْتُمْ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ These are just samples, some verses. He says, or do they say he has fabricated it? Say, okay, you're saying, we're not, we're not going to say the Quran. Allah says, then produce Produce ten surahs like it. Forged and call upon whomever you can besides Allah if you are truthful. He's challenging not only human and jinn, those who deal with the jinn and use magic and use like supernatural. Go ahead and work with them. Try to get something. And other surahs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned. Bring this, bring that. Okay, فَأْتُوا بِسُورَةٍ مِنْ مِثْلِهِ In Surah Al-Baqarah, bring me just one chapter. Until today, nobody was able. Musaylima, the liar, Al-Kadhab, he tried to make up some of that. People were laughing at his words. And he was very fluent in the Arabic language. In the time of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, he came and searched, says, I am a prophet after Muhammad. And he started making poetry, and he had a following. And people were just listening to him. Until today, when we hear his words, they're funny. Make, so people cannot come up with the Quran. Those of us who studied Arabic for more than 45 years, I can tell you until today, we humbly stand and say, we can't. It's bigger than us. People just stand in Urdu language, 
or English, they say, I can't write like Iqbal, I cannot write like Shakespeare, it's too much for me. Well, this is Allah's word and I'm telling you, big scholars who studied Arabic for year, not 10 years or some intensive course for two years and come and make yourself a alim like they do these days, it goes six months and come. No, four years and stand humbly and say, you know, I wrote two books, how to learn Arabic, and they are taught in schools. I can humbly say, I cannot write like it. Second one, second argument we use. I'm just summarizing for you. Time is not with us. No matter how knowledgeable and understanding people are, they do make mistakes, oversights, shortcomings. They will. They will contradict themselves. The Quran is so many surahs. And the Quran is repetitive. It repeats many ayahs the same. Now, some one time, this gentleman from Switzerland, we were in a conference, he said, I really like the Quran and this, but I find it repetitive. I said, there is a reason why it's repetitive. If person is repetitive in different places and add one word here, changes and gives a different meaning here and different perspective and the same ayah mentioned seven, seven times, but there is always a tweak. For instance, we read last night, يُرِيدُونَ لِيُطْفِئُوا نُورَ اللَّهِ بُأَفْوَاهِمْ وَيَأْبَ اللَّهُ أَنْ يُطْفِئُوا وَلَأْبَ اللَّهُ يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ أَنْ يُطْفِئُوا وَاللَّهُ مُتِمُّنُ Why Allah repeats the same ayat but tweaks here and there? Every time he mentions, there is a focus on one thing. That's why there is repetitiveness. It's actually a seal, a signature of God. A human being would make mistakes when repeating the same and not focusing. And I can go over, uh, maybe Sunday, inshallah, we'll go over more about this. And that's why Allah says, وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِي اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا If it were from other, had it been from other than Allah, they would have found so much disagreement, inconsistencies. You know, you write a book and you repeat the same idea, you would never repeat it the same way or if you repeat it you will probably be exactly it wouldn't bring any details it would be just a bad repetition so no human being can remember everything and how would you memorize we write poetry you know and we go for um, we used to when we go to read poetry we have to read off the paper because even my own poetry i cannot Memorize it. It's hard to memorize your own words. Have you tried that? So the Quran is different. It's not poetry. It's not regular talk. It's neither this nor that. It's something different. As the experts of poetry said, one described it as a beautiful tree with fruits and started, he says, it's not, it's not poetry. The Arabs used to put, give people cotton to put the people of Mecca in people's ears so they don't listen to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Because they say, at one time they say, this is magic, but it's not magic. Magic doesn't work like that. And magic is evil. This is not evil. This is telling people to be good to their parents, good to their spouses, not to kill their daughters, huh? to not to drink, not to steal, not to fornicate, not to cheat, not to lie, not to backstab, not to take what's not yours, to fear God when nobody watches you. He is watching you. Subhanallah. There is no interest for the one who is sending this message except your interest. Not to add many other things. Find me a teaching in the Quran that is not good for you. One said, I don't like hijab. Okay, you don't like hijab, mama, okay. Go walk as you like. But if you look at hijab and what it does, you will find many benefits. If you don't believe in it, that's your problem. Oh, I don't like the banning. One time, one young man, I remember vividly this one. He was around 19, 20. He says, listen, I like Islam. I love my Muslim friends. But two things, because of two things, I cannot become Muslim. I said, what? He said, sex and alcohol. 
and I love my alcohol. I love my booze, he said. I said, you're sick, my friend. When you get cured, you will understand. Years passed, and I heard, alhamdulillah, I didn't see him, that he became Muslim. He had strong faith, but the lust and desire possessed him. He was a slave of sexual desires and slave of addiction. But when he overcame that, there was no other choice for him but to accept. Alhamdulillah, we didn't tell him you're bad. I say, may God show you light and give you light in your heart. Because he had to think. He says, I believe in one God. But because of these two things, I, he was a young man, strong, filled with energy. Hormones are high. He couldn't control them. He, it was not him talking. It was his biochemical being talking. Third one, because we cannot go over all the details, God has taken care of the preservation of this Quran. And I spoke earlier and I mentioned that it's there. It's memorized. It's in people's hearts before it was put in one book. Yes, in the time of Prophet it was not in one book. It was in different material. May Allah bless Abu Bakr Siddiq. He brought everything and put it in one book because it was a, a culture that memorized more than wrote. Like the Hellenic culture they wrote. For Jesus, peace be on him, the New Testament was not written until he left, even for Jesus. The early accounts are the epistles of Paul. Then the, the apostles, Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John, they wrote. And Mark, Matthew, they didn't meet Jesus anyways. They never met him. Even Luke, I believe, they say John met him, but we don't know. That's not our business. But compare that to people who memorized. And that's why when the, the war with Musaylima I mentioned earlier and the Qurra, the Hafids were killed in that Yamama. So what happened? Abu Omar ibn Khattab said to Abu Bakr, you know what, Hafids are dying. Let's put this in a book just in case we die. At least it's in a book. He said, yeah, you're right. And they put it in the book. And then of course, Uthman made sure everything. And then Sayyidina Ali came, may Allah be pleased with him, and put the dots for Ajam, can read properly and don't make mistakes. Quran had to go and then numbering the verses and this. But the Quran was memorized and it was read, read the same way the Hafid reads when he leads you for Taraweeh or you listen to him. Number four, the great miracle that the Quran contains is its legislations, its laws. Tell me there is a law. Oh, we don't like uh, the, the laws about riba. Subhanallah. You like paying now 7% for mortgage? You like it? Huh? You like the laws that make it now? Yesterday, I saw a video happening here in Masaga. May Allah bless. It looked like a sister with hijab. That's how I recognize. She's, mashallah, the hell. That's a good wife. That's a good wife. She came out of the car looking for a stick to help her husband. She helped her husband. The guy did not, was not able to, to take their car at the gas station. It was a man and a woman and two children. The video is very, it's in the city here. And the brother shared it. He says, this is happening in Misaga. They want to take the car by force. And then the, he was putting gas in the car. And then the guy came. He wasn't even wearing a shirt to jump in. And then the guy saw him, jumped on him. A strong guy, the wife came out, opened the trunk, and she's looking for a stick. She's hitting the guy. What a wonderful sister. May God, the, there might be Palestinians, mashallah. <laughs> because Palestinians are filled with courage, <laughs> you know. But she came out and helped her, her husband, you know, and I don't know. But they are good couple. And the guy wasn't able, they, 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 they chased him out. You know, and it's common now they are even home invasion. I was talking, listening to a, a lawyer this morning on a case of home invasion. And then the guy who hit the guy, the guy, the owner of the house who hit him, he got charged. Of course, so they tell you what to do and not to do if the guy is home invasion is becoming very common now. So if there is no laws that deter people from stealing 
or, or taking what's not there. If there is no system, qanun, then there will be fawda, anarchy. Islam talks about laws to deter. You need system, you need adala, you need justice. Okay, so there are many laws, it just makes sense. Stories of, of, of things that we didn't know. And now archaeology is finding things nobody mentioned. Where is Aram mentioned? Nowhere except in the Quran. Now we saw Aram. We just came from a trip. You know, in Saudi Arabia, we went places that people really don't go. Usually people go. Special places. Unbelievable. Things mentioned in the Quran, not even mentioned in the Bible. Of civilization, Qawm Salih, Qawm Hud. Now everything is showing an Aram. Aram Adat al Imad. The city with big pillars. Subhanallah. Now and still, still to come, because Arabia is under, because of sedimentation and desertation, a lot is covered. Now they are finding. You will see, don't lose faith. I can't, I'm just touching on things. Number five, Quran informing us about unseen matters, past and the future. Inshallah, we'll talk more about that. Not only the Quran, the Sunnah which is explaining the Quran is going over that. Unseen. I would love to give you example. Time is not with us. But there are so many examples in the Quran that Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us it's going to happen. You know, like all what we're going through, this, this global warming and all this pollution and all what's happening in the Middle East and all and all and all. It's coming, subhanAllah. And the war of crisis that we haven't seen, it's coming. The Quran speaks about that. And the big pollution in the sea and the land and the fish, it's coming. It's happening. Unfortunately, time is not with us to give you all the verses. Number six, the, and also before that, the fetus. Read Professor Keith Moore from University of Toronto, what he said about, um, about uh, embryology, the stages of a fetus. And he said it could not be, it's impossible that it's from a human being. Not only that, Professor, Google this guy, American scholar who came and there are videos from 70s and 80s, you'll see them. The, the professor from the US, Mark, Professor Marshall Johnson, who actually said either Muhammad had telescopes or it's from God or it's coincidence. And when he researched it, it's impossible it's a coincidence, it's so detailed, then Muhammad had telescopes. But it's impossible. Telescopes actually, uh, sorry, microscopes, not telescopes. Microscopes were only invented in 17th century by the Italian uh, guy. And it's impossible. It's impossible. Then this is from God. Professor Marshall Johnson, please. He is very, very erudite on this subject. And look at his statement. It'll take you just a few minutes and you'll find. The Quran is about... Many things, inshallah, uh, unfortunately, to be fair, I did not do justice to this topic. But the most important thing to remember is that uh, there are some verses in the Quran that talk against the Prophet. Can I say something and put myself in trouble? You know the story of Abasa that actually exposed. It's something that happened, nobody saw. The blind man didn't see it. And Allah said, why did you do this to the blind? Why did you frown your face? There are another story in Surah At-Tawbah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, may Allah forgive you for what you did. Why did you do so and so? In Surah At-Tawbah. Also, uh, Surah Al-Ahzab, ayah number 37. You're hiding things in your heart and Allah will show it. And Allah started talking about very private matters. And then in Surah At-Tawbah, Ayah 43. May Allah excuse you, Muhammad. Why did you grant them to leave before those who told the truth were evident to you and you had a certain the liars? This was heavy on the Prophet this ayah. 943 for your reference. Another ayah. مَا كَانِ لِنَبِيًّا لَهُ أَسْرَى a prophet should never have captives. 
until he has thoroughly decimated the enemy in their land. Six, uh, nine, uh, uh, ayah, Surah Al-Anfal, eight, ayah number 67. Why would Prophet Muhammad وسلم, talk against himself? And it's very, would you embarrass yourself in front of people? So many ayahs like that. And the list goes on about the Quran is nothing but the word of Allah. The word of Allah, not to add the peace and the shifa and the cure we get from the Quran. But if a person's heart is blind, you cannot change his mind. Well, inshallah, he will, he read, studied, even fasted, mashallah, and he is ready to become Muslim. Ready, my friend? Yalla, bismillah. Ashhadu. Ashhadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illa. Illa. Allah. Allah. Wa ashhadu. Wa ashhadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Abduhu. 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 Ab. Ab. Tuhu. Tuhu. Wa. Wa. Rasulu. Rasulu. I bear witness. I bear witness. That there is no one. That there is no one. Worthy of worship. Worthy of worship. Except Allah. Except Allah. And I bear witness. And I bear witness. That Muhammad. That Muhammad. Is his servant. Is his servant. And messenger. And messenger. I believe. I believe. In Allah. In Allah. His angels. His angels. His books. His books. His messengers. His messengers. The last day. The last day. The day of judgment. The day of judgment. And life after death. And life after death. And I believe. And I believe. In destiny. In destiny. Whether good. Whether good or bad. Or bad. Today. Today. I declare myself. I declare myself. To become a Muslim. To become a Muslim. And to live as a Muslim. And to live as a Muslim. Try to say Muslim. Muslim. Thank you. And to die as a Muslim. And to die as a Muslim. And to meet my Lord. And to meet my Lord. On the day of judgment. On the day of judgment. As a Muslim. As a Muslim. MashaAllah. Congratulations. MashaAllah. A very nice, fine person. MashaAllah, beautiful human being. We had a chance to chat before. MashaAllah. Would you like to say something? Um, you know, this, I'm excited. It's uh, nerve-wracking, but it's something that I've wanted to do for quite a while. And thank you all for being here as uh, I perform my shahada. Thank you. Do you mind if they hug you? No, I don't mind. Yeah. <laughs> Be easy on the brother, okay? Please make a prayer for us and also for Palestine and anywhere there is suffering in the world. Please pray. Your prayer is answered. You're purer than anybody in the room except the angels. So please take a minute and 